Today's video is brought to you by AG1, but we'll talk to you more about that later. My nice towels. Whatever. <laughs> you know what would work best, Katie, is body heat. Start a fire in the wood stove. Poor Zuzu. I went to let the chickens out this morning and I found my Silky in the water bucket. She, her head was out, but her whole, just about her whole body was in. So I guess at some point she got stuck in the water bowl and couldn't get out and now she's very cold. She's still alive, but she's cold. She's starting cold. to dry off. Zuzu, you gotta get warm. Hi. Well, I've been sitting out here for about an hour and she's starting to dry off. She's shivering a lot less. Her vent, which I thought was prolapsed, has gone back in on its own, which is really good because I didn't wanna have to deal with a pro prolapsed chicken. It's not a easy thing to deal with. So I'm just gonna leave her on the heat lamp for a little while until she's acting normal. And she's still a little bit wet, like under her wings, the feathers haven't quite dried out, but she's drying out on top. So she's doing a lot better, thankfully. Cause Facebook just reminded me that three years ago today, I picked up these little silky chicks and they were, I don't know, six weeks old or something. So I, uh, I'm a little bit attached to them. They're my favorite chickens. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna leave her under the heat lamp for a little while and just keep monitoring her. All right, welcome back everyone. This video might be a little bit random. We kind of just have some life chores to deal with today. So an update on the little chicken that was all wet. She was, I left her under the heat lamp for a little while. She dried up quite a bit. And then when I went out, she was moving around. So I just left her. She has a little hole that she can go back into the main chicken run. So she's gone in there. She's hanging out with everyone else. And she actually laid an egg on the towel that I had her wrapped up in. So thankfully she's doing okay. I'm really happy about that because I did not want to have to put her down or loot have her die on us so really good that she is better next up we need to go get our water running again I went over there a few days ago to check on it and the uh, big tank of water that we pump out of was low and the pump was just running because uh, it was sunny out so I just turned it off I didn't really have time to deal with it then but we think that the intake is just a little bit plugged so we're gonna go get that running again we can have all of our waters topped up and then we need to go get the electric fence around the pigs beefed up because we've had that problem bear it is still sticking around i actually found some more footage on the game camera that i had missed before where i'll put it up right now but the bear goes right up and is sniffing the pigs and the pigs are right there and they don't seem to have any fear so it looks like at the end of the clip, the bear gets zapped by the electric fence, but it's only a 0.15 joule, so it's not very strong. We have better uh, fence chargers and we have more uh, electric line to go around. So we're gonna just get that beefed up. We're gonna plug in, uh, we have to take one of our power stations up there because it, our fence chargers are the 12 volt kind whereas at our neighbor's house, he has it plugged in to his house with an extension cord. So we're just gonna get that hooked up. We're gonna plug in the power station so that we don't have to think about it. Way too comfortable knowing that there's food around. He hasn't really gotten any food, but we absolutely cannot have him getting our pigs because we've invested so much money into the pigs and the meat chickens. And if it starts getting a taste for animals, we're gonna have bigger problems. So. We gotta get this bear not feeling so comfortable here. 
So this fence charger will give a bear a giant blast. Is that the jewel? This is the jewel. Uh, this one's actually bigger than the one we've got on the chickens. I've felt the effects of this and there's no way a bear is going to enjoy this feeling. So, problem is, 12 volt. I don't have a cigarette car lighter that I usually just jimmy rig to. Oh, there's one of the panels actually, but we're gonna leave that there. Yeah, we have. So, what I'm gonna be doing is just using a DC, AC DC uh, converter, which everybody has a whole ton of these probably sitting in a box somewhere. Um, we don't use this one, and it is rated for what I believe it's rated 14 volts, 0.8 amps. Pretty sure this will work with this quite well. So, let's have an experiment in electricity. <laughs> It's not gonna wreck the charger, is it? No, not with that much power. Okay. So it's a 12 volt charger, but it's 14 volts, which is a full battery. Do this, Katie? Thanks. Oh, that smell. Ugh. Now that we have it all hooked up, we're finding that the 12 volt plug-in isn't working. We always have problems with these little lighter plug-in things. So Greg's gonna pull it apart, see if he can get it to work. We were gonna put more electric line around, but I think the way it is should be okay. There's two levels and then we're just gonna make sure it's all secure and there's nothing touching the line on the bottom or anything like that. So that it's running really well and can zap that bear. So after doing a quick Google search, that wire that has the little white stripes, I figured it as much. It's the positive. So I should explain we're going back to the plug-in. Oh yeah, oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> we're going back to the plug-in. We'll see if this works. Um, the 12 volt did not, and I have no clue why. It doesn't make sense. It's if this doesn't work, then it's the charger. Yeah. Boop. Straight in. You bet. Oh, to that. Watch out, boo-boo. Jennifer, come on. It's on. Is it working? I thought it lit up. Do it again. Well, I found out the hard way that it was in fact working. <laughs> So we've got it all hooked up now. Aren't gonna need the power station because it's plugged in. So that's good. We don't have to worry about the power station. We can take that home. And uh, we're just gonna irrigate around so that the ground is really wet because when it dries out, it doesn't uh, shock them as much. 
so we want to have it nice and wet here so Greg's going to get his uh, fire pump and we're just gonna start watering <laughs> out I'm gonna freak out like a little baby girl what the fuck is that what is hey, that let me see a rock so you can get some sunshine on it ew that's in our water that's in our water Katie container Yeah, it's not going very fast. Still. Slow. Oh yeah, that's better. Watch out, Bobo! Does it look? Yeah, it's a little mucky. Not too bad. A little algae. We gotta get a lid for this. I think we're gonna turn this into a pre filter. Mm. You know that? That's clean enough. Mm -hmm. There's that hole you put it through. While we wait for that to fill, we're gonna just go for a little quad ride. Should be pumping. Should be pumping. It? Yep, I can hear it. Come on, Bubba! Shortcut. Next on our list is to continue getting firewood. Our woodshed is not quite full yet, so we really need to get it filled up as full as we can get it. I would love to have another pile on the side starting to dry out for next year and uh, just try and be ahead of the game.
One of the things that keeps us going in all of our many, many projects is AG1. And AG1 is a sponsor of today's video, but don't be deterred by that. We've actually been purchasing AG1 for more than a year and we were super excited when AG1 reached out and wanted to work with us because we love this product so much and I'm gonna tell you why. Drinking AG1 is such an easy habit to form because you're simply putting a scoop of the powder into eight to 12 ounces of water, giving it a shake, and then you're ready to go for your daily vitamin and mineral needs that scientists have indicated are necessary for human health. AG1 is really bridging the gap in our diet, and some of the things that we've noticed are improved energy levels throughout the day. We've had stable moods. It helps us recover from stress. Our gut health has been way better and my hair is longer and stronger than it's ever been. AG1 tastes great. It's actually naturally sweetened with pineapple. Um, there's some flavors of like apple and stuff. It's quite fruity, but it's not too sweet. And we find we actually crave it throughout the day because it's just so delicious. So AG1 has an awesome deal on right now. If you click the link down in our description or you can type in this link right here on the screen, you're gonna receive five free travel packs and a bottle of this vitamin D3 and K2, which is gonna give you a good boost as we head into this gray weather. And I just wanted to give a big thank you to AG1 for keeping us going for all this time and for supporting our channel. So Greg actually cut up all this firewood yesterday and we didn't get around to loading it up into the truck to bring it home. Got the truck at work today, so I'm actually gonna be loading up the quad trailer and I'm gonna cart all this firewood home so that we can get it processed and into our woodshed. Hopefully we can get our woodshed filled up and then some so that we're even more ahead of the schedule for next year. And uh, yeah, we've got some beautiful large firewood from the tree that we took down a few weeks ago. So I'm just gonna go get it loaded up. Okay, I did not expect to get that whole treetop in the trailer. <laughs> I managed to get it over this whole lumpy part without losing any wood. So now I'm just gonna take it back to the woodshed. We've got two more logs back there that we will be saving for the mill and anything that's kind of too small or rotten in the middle or whatever, we save for firewood. So I've got a fair bit of nice dry dead larch gonna be great firewood. You got your ball, boo boo. Let me throw it. Let me throw the ball for you. You can walk into. Look at this guy, he got one right in the quad and now he doesn't want to walk anymore.
So we also had this pine fall in the really big windstorm that we had years ago and Greg cut this up. It's been sitting in here for quite a while and we've just never really come in to get it. But today, now that we have the quad and the trailer, I was able to kind of drive into the forest. I can pick it up, no problem. It's a lot less work than if we were parked on the driveway and picking up every piece and carrying it out. So, so much easier with this trailer. And it's pretty open in here, so I was able to turn it around and get into the position that I need to get out of here once the trailer's full. much this weighs. I know the trailer is either a thousand pounds or 1500 pounds, but I have no idea how much the wood weighs. So I don't know if I'm overloading or not. These feel quite a bit heavier than the larch I just carried, but there's only three pieces left. So I really just want to get them on. Well, we made it, no issues. Got the same jackknife backup job as I did last time. But that's okay, we're gonna get this wood unloaded. Now we have a giant pile of firewood again. <laughs> Thank you. 
Well, so much for that idea. <laughs> There we go. We're, our heating bill has been paid for the year. Yeah. Yep. Firewood heats you three times. When you pick it up, when you chop it, and when you burn it. And when you move it. Yeah. And when you think about it. <laughs> and now we're done. So. We're done. And so is this video. See you next time.